It was supposed to be what? 80 to what? 8 to half past 5. <laughs> Monday to Wednesday. During what? Recess. Recess. Uh, so recess. No recess for the babies. No recess for the babies? Um, hi. So what are we doing today? Chepisio and then my my I girl. Who add a song to the video that I'm I'm not. Because my chap is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are we doing today? What are we doing? So basically, I'm just here. I'm just yeah. That's what I said. So. Ufe iti klar klar klar. I have to think. Hello, how can I not? On the spot. Ramatu of. Ramah. When I'm in here, I can't think on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> it's standardized in all South African first aid kits, but guys overseas, this has been written out of first responders, first aiders in this country, protocols a long time ago already. It's often ineffective and potentially very dangerous for you to use this device. But we have to show you this because you live in South Africa, right? Open it up. Some of them, depending on the brand, actually has a little face drawn on it to show you exactly where the positioning is of this one way valve. It's one way, meaning it allows what you've got in your lungs, the air, to blow into the patient's lungs, but the valve, in theory, stops any contaminant or dangerous bacteria, whatever, to actually get into your lungs, potentially. Right. So the long, oblong part will be placed into the mouth. Now, obviously, when you blow into this device, if the nose is not pinched shut, the air is going to come out of the nose. Do you agree? I want to know from you guys. Are we going to pinch the nose shut on top of the plastic or underneath, and why? On top. Now let's say this is an EPI yes. patient. There's blood, you might have vomited, you've tried to stop something oh, no, breathing, the bone now it needs to be resussed. If I put it on top and I give breath, can you see? Can you see how close the clear of my eyes are to a contaminant mm -hmm. and potentially blood splatter ending up in your eyes? So we always squeeze it shut underneath the plastic. Mm -hmm. Plus, this is adults, nice and dry. Real patient going to shock, there might be sweat, blood, vomit, whatever. So if you've been shut on top, there's always the potential that you're going to pull it from the mouth. Okay, are you still with me? Right. So underneath, with this hand, can you guys see? Otherwise, just stand up. I'm going to try and balance it like this. With this hand pinching the nose shut, you're going to press on the forehead. These fingers grab the manual. Please never put the flat part of the hand on the soft part of the chin. It can potentially impede ventilations. So we're going to do a head tilt chin lift. Okay, pull back the head completely. You're going to place your mouth not only just around the valve, but you're going to give this doll a French kiss, this patient. Do you know what a French kiss is? <laughs> Who of you don't know? Okay. <laughs> kiss. Okay, when you kiss your mommy, okay, it's like this, just around the inner valve. If you do a French kiss, <laughs> place the whole mouth to seal the whole patient's mouth when you give a breath. Otherwise, you might potentially lose air on the sides. Now, apart from the fact that you've got very close contact with your patient with this device, if you blow too hard and fast, which actually happens in most resuscitations to an extent, you not only blow into the lungs, but into the stomach as well. So if you notice your patient getting fatter and fatter, obviously trauma could be internal bleeding, we'll do that tomorrow, but it's usually because you blow too hard and fast, you blow into the stomach as well. And at some stage, the receptors in the lining of the stomach is going to say, get rid of that pressure. So when you give your next breath, 
potentially projectile vomiting. Mm. This shoots out and you potentially get the vomit in your eyes. Okay. That's yeah. why we don't like this device. But if that's all you've got, pre-hospital, you can try and use it if you feel comfortable. I want you guys to practice various techniques of seeking. You're first going to do the single person technique where you make a C that you put around the index valve. Okay? The E, you're going to grab the mandible, seal it at the bottom, and then you're going to do a head tilt to chin lift to open up the airway. Okay, guys, this must be doll, made in China. You can't open up the airway completely, otherwise you break the nipple. <laughs> otherwise, you can ventilate, actually, you can ventilate quite nicely. Okay, we're going to give two places. We just open up. Okay. There we are. Okay. It's going to be a gentle 1001. You never back too hard or fast. You're going to cause barren trauma and affect venous return to the heart as well. Okay? So it's literally a gentle chin lift and a gentle squeeze 1001. You just, just want to see chest rise. Then I want you to practice the Emitus grip. That is, should you have a big patient and you've got small hands and you battle with the C and E's, you can put two thumbs on either side. It's much easier to seal them. Rest of the fingers, grab the mandible, do a little chin and you okay. And then you practice two C's, two E's, and your family resuscitate will pull back to you. Okay, okay, Nobody touched me in a crisis. Nobody touched me in a crisis. I believe that all of your dreams are the rations. You took my heart, all my keys, and my patience. You took my heart, all my sleep, but decoration. You mistaken my love, I brought for you for foundation. All that I wanted from you was to keep me something that I never had. Something that you never see. Something that you. Sometimes you have to switch it on. Sometimes as you open up the plastic, it automatically switches on. The E of the AED stands for external. You're going to do something external, not an invasive procedure. The D, sorry, am I going too fast? The D stands for to defibrillate. What does the term fibrillation mean? When the heart fibrillates, what happens? Anybody know? Any further back? I thought you could Right. The heart is a muscle, you agree. It got trapped and squeezes blood and then sick the oxygen. You know the word is all that. I don't need to go through that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, I'm not going to go into detail as I was watching do that in later years during your courses, something goes wrong and instead of properly pumping blood through the body, it just fillers. The best way to get it out of this abnormal rhythm is to shock it, to reset the heart so it can contract again and pump blood through the body. It's a very sensitive machine. So remember, it's verbally, but also check with your eyes that nobody is touching. Then, should a shock be indicated? It, and it tells you, shock advice, charging, do not touch the patient. You have to, a second time, verbally and visually ensure nobody's touching. Clear? Why? What will happen if I press the orange button and someone is touching the patient? You potentially have another problem, okay, another patient, right? So it's twice that you clear. Now, until you're properly qualified, you guys, if you start using the AED, you never left anymore. You don't take those pads off again, even if that patient starts to breathe. Ambulance services that arrive can replace it with their stuff, but you keep it on once you've decided to put it on. Are you happy about that? Right. As a single resuscitator in a good South African, I always carry my pocket mask with me. <laughs> what someone did the previous course. They actually took two pocket masks and they put it underneath it looked like Madonna's boobs. Yako <laughs> 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 rhymes. On the opposite side of where I am, you guys see. Yeah, I'm just going to suggest you can see. Okay. I, Glory, I continue and I have 30 compressions to this. You bought a video in twice as well. 30 compressions to <laughs> this. You always put your AD next to the shoulder and head of the patient without it touching them. Okay, we're just sitting now like you, so you guys can see. Okay, step one, he switches it on. Please note, it works around my hand. From this moment, he takes over the chest area and he says, Do not touch the patient. Yeah. Okay. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of For a second time, he says, Yeah. Deliver shock now. Press the orange button now. And he immediately starts with compressions. You can just say 10, Counting out loud. Okay. And we're going to do a two person bagging. Two. You can maintain this action extended position of the neck. It helps with keeping the airway open. Eight, nine, ten, 20, 40, 40, 40. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, when it says analyzing heart rhythm, if he is tired, he can now move to baggy and I will take over the compressions. Okay. What do we do first of all? We it's like you've got love heart. Tap the foot of the baby. Hi baby, speak to the baby as well. <laughs> check the brachial pulse inside of the arm. At the same time, visually check if you can see chest rise. How long do we check? Five to ten seconds says nothing. What do you tell your partner? Please? And tell them how much pressure in your statues. Tell them it's an unresponsive infant, no pulse, no breathing. Right. We're first going to practice the two finger technique. Find the nipples directly underneath the nipple line. On the sternum, place two fingers. We're first going to practice this. Two fingers. Right. Are you guys ready? Are you count now? And one, two, three, push hard fast. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Practice opening the airway. It's a slight leap of gender. Right, let's see if people have a right hip. Okay. Give, give it two breaths. See if people arrive. First person, two thumbs in swiftly hands. You're going to do 50 compressions now. Two thumbs in swiftly hands. Find the, oh, this one's the nipples, nipples, no, no, no. Okay, now we're doing two thumbs in swiftly hands. Okay. Right, you're going to count up now for 15 compressions. Person at the top, get ready. You can actually put back up whilst not already. Uh, Side angle chin up. Remember the, the cloth baby is going to have to pull back completely. Right, guys, count loud. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Fifteen. 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 Fifteen compressions, count up now, keep two breaths. You're not that tall, no? What do you mean I'm not that tall? Because I'm like... Two... 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 Mar Chepi si Omar. Oh, na 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 kalau ini tak? Oh, kulim bobo baru le. Oh ya, pidur rumah loya kat Chepi. Ya, ini langsung ni. Oh, ampola ya. Kau nang ausi lu. Nak kita pilih first aid. Kamu kau angu. Ampola ya ausi. Can't be that bad. What? Okay. So you want to do more? Are safe, guys. These are your healthcare professionals. Yeah. Hello, Mona. Mo. Chippy, see, ah, she's the king. How we tough, me? How we tough? You can use well. Just make sure that if you've got short arms, that the turnaround of the baby between the backside and chest thrust is smooth and consistent. We're gonna grab the whole mandible. And remember, if you're hyperextend or hyperflex a baby's neck, it closes the airway. So ensure that this airway is aligned. Now how to grab the baby, that's like arm and leg you're going to use. If your arms are long enough, baby's small enough, put one leg on either side. These chairs are very uncomfortable, they actually pulled you back up. Extend this leg, put your baby on top of your leg, head slightly lower than the rest, to facilitate movement of what they're choking you and or, uh, on and or vomiting. With the heel of your hand, you're going to do five hard back slaps. One, two, three, four, five. It's not just pushing. After five back slaps, take this hand, put it around the whole occipital area of the baby's head. Put it onto the other arm and leg. Ensure that the airway is around and in the same position where your two finger technique was. Do five chest thrusts. We're not doing compressions now. It's chest thrust over one second. One, two, three, four, five. Back onto this arm. Five back slaps, five chest thrusts until the baby becomes unresponsive or you manage to unchoke them. Thereafter, we start with the CPR, one exception. Every time you open the mouth to get this, you can see what they choke you on. Try and pull it out. Carry on with your resuscitation. If you've got short arms, you can also take both legs and put it underneath your legs, okay? And carry on with your chest thrust and 
on the head. If there's a slight fracture, you can increase the intracranial pressure. Um, we're going to palpate down the erectus spinae. Have you guys done muscles yet? Yes. Have you? Where's yes. the erectus spinae muscle? Where does it run? In the back. It starts where? The spine. Okay, it runs down there. Mm. Okay, that is especially where we might be able to find something like tenderness and swelling indicating a potential, not effort, a potential spinal injury. Okay. While we're palpating the head and down the erectus spinae, we're assessing visually the whole face for dots. Check for any swelling above the uh, eyebrows. What are we going to check? I just want to see if you guys know. Underneath the eyes and behind the ears in terms of discoloration. Just want to see if anybody knows. Okay. Uh, I'll repeat it again when we do even uh, uh, spine injuries tomorrow. If you see dark discoloration losing underneath the eyes and here behind the ears, that is often an indication of a basal skull fracture. We call this raccoon eyes. You know what a raccoon is? Mm. Those little features with the black around the eyes. These are called battle signs, battlers in fighting. Okay? Um, who you saw Rivers Rivers Ian comes photo directly after also the shotter? One stupid journalist published it online, they literally removed it. But you can see she had raccoon eyes and battle signs. Anybody see that? That was an indication of a basic skull fracture being shot at. But the journalists, you know, most people don't know a lot of medical lingo. So they said it's an indication that he hit with a bat in the face or he punched it. But base, you can actually see the grey matter coming out as well. Anybody know what's up with students? What do you know? Just in the water. Dusted. Okay, so that was the first part. Okay, so that was the first part. Ma'am, are you sick? Yes. So you're not coming. My sister, you're choking. My sister, you're choking. <laughs> Morning. It's day two of first aid training. Um, I live 20 minutes away from campus, and it's currently 20 minutes to. And knowing that I use a public transport, I might just be late already. But hopefully not. Let's go to campus and see what the teacher has in store for us. It's quarter past eight and I just got to campus. I'm late, yeah. But campus is very empty. Eh? Here's what it looks like. There is absolutely no one here. Who's this? Oh, Rufia. Yeah. Why is she on her phone? Have we started? Oh, yeah. Let's see. I haven't stopped. Are we safe on campus? <laughs> Are we safe on campus? I'm sorry, PC, I'm a fan, and a boy. I'm good, 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 Lorenzo, Lorenzo, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the house.
I don't know how to egg him. Oh, Capiki, eh, eh, sharp fairy fairy, who's it? Who's it? Feeding, and I've got a fault. Leaving it on their backs. If I bother, it, they're gonna inhale it and aspirate. Then we want to put them in the recovery position. I just want. But you guys will see. Okay, so I'm gonna first turn him towards me so that you can see from this side what it looks like. Then I'm gonna turn from that side so that you can see what I've left arm. Right, so the first thing is, is that the reason why we turn a patient into a cover condition is to open to my tongue and to protect the airway. Okay, so if the patient is unresponsive, there's no spinal injury, we want to prevent choking or any vomiters from going into the lungs, and also if the person is unconscious and on their back, muscles are relaxed, the tongue can fall back and down to the top of the airway, which can affect breathing. Right, so first thing we're going to do, when we work with the patient, on your knees we don't stand like this and work with the patient, and we also don't do this. <laughs> Right, so first things first, the arm on my side of the patient, relax, <laughs> the arm on my side, I'm going to put it next to the patient's head. Okay, so this is going to become a pillow. Right, the arm on that side goes on top of the patient's body, it's a piece of stuff. <laughs> relax. Yeah, just relax. Yeah, like when your girlfriend touches. <laughs> right, now what you can do with the leg, there's two ways of doing it. First way, you can take the opposite leg, put it over to this side, alright? Then you're going to, when you turn the patient, this leg will be on the floor. Second way, is actually a cheat. So if your patient is very heavy and you're struggling to turn them, you can bend that knee instead of putting it over. Right, this is a lever. So if I pull this, the body will follow. Mm. Okay, but I'm not going to do that. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> right, so <clears throat> head next to the head, other arm on top of the body, opposite leg on this side. So now he's ready to roll. Right, one hand on the leg, one hand on the shoulder. You don't pull the patient's clothing. Is it expensive? <laughs> <laughs> right, so one hand on the shoulder, one hand on the, on the leg. Pull. Right, so now he's on his side. He's gonna hold himself like that if I let go, because he's conscious. Okay, put down the broomstick. <laughs> right, so like this, now if I let go, if the patient that's actually unconscious, he's gonna fall forward or he's gonna roll back. Right, so this side, just hold him there. This knee, the one that you put over, just bend the knee, put it on the ground. So this knee now is balancing that, so I don't need to do anything further. This hand that I put on top of his body, just straighten it, put it in front. So now this arm is supporting that, this leg is supposed to rest. Now what you can do, you can lift the patient's head, put his head on his arm, so that his head is not on the floor. Especially outside, it's dirty with grass and sand. Right. And just to make sure that the patient's airway is open, you can do a head tilt and lift, just to, to open the airway. <laughs> this is quite You know what this is, by the way? This is a kukri. The Gurkhas in Nepal use a specific size one for combat. You get different sizes. Uh, this is real buffalo horn. This is buffalo hide. This one they use to cut the valical cord of a newborn baby. And this one they just clean, clean the shaft off. Not very sharp, but a wonderful way to just set up all the muscle. So this thing is now stuck into him. It's quite heavy. It's dragging down. How are we going to mobilize it? Are we going to do that whole donut thing? You can back it up, but you know what? It's going to take so long even to apply enough roll the bandages. That for first aid is preferably just hold it in place. You can even put a lot of pillows underneath it, have your patient sit down, but do not mess around with something like this. But what if? There's more. All right. <laughs> Dangerous low mom. <laughs> what if there's an object this size? A three and three doesn't have to be a sword, it can be anything that's poles, whatever. How do you mobilize this? Now a through a through and through. How are you going to stabilize this? The front and the back. Once again, if you are sort of now breathing shivering, it's going to cause movement and excruciating pain potential in this victim. So boxes, anything that in a position that is sitting or lying that you can put underneath will help secure it and wait until paramedics arrive. Sir, I will knight you now. <laughs> right, <laughs> sir. Thank you. No. Just careful. These are sharp. Uh, eh. This girl is dangerous. This is the fourth knife she's holding today. <laughs> today alone. Oh, that you see is true. What can I say? Please recognize I'm trying, baby. Wow, 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 wow. She's in me. I feel wow, 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 wow. She's in me. The way that. All right. She's got a hidden spine injury. No, no, fine. So she can be back around. I don't know how to run out. I don't know how to run out. Okay. <laughs> so she's actually doing this quite effectively. We do not want to pick up 
the blanket or whatever you're dragging on to such an extent that you actually arch the neck and back. You're going to use your legs. <laughs> what can I use to split if I don't have anything else? I don't have a pencil. I only have him and myself. You can use your own. Why? Why should you spend this thing? How is that going to work? <laughs> so what you can do is you can use the finger next to it. Right, so if you have tape, cellar tape, insulation tape, anything like that, you can just wrap it around. Okay, it's not a long-term fix, but it can help until we get to, to make it out. Alright, so <clears throat> you get these ones. You know those ad boards that you find on the poles? Just go and steal them, make a split. Okay, that time, have you ever seen these? Okay, do you know how they work? Or have you ever seen them? Who said yes? Do you know how they work? Not really. Okay, did you have Legos when you were little? Did you not play with them? How to set them together? Okay, so these splints, what's nice about them, um, firstly, they are plastic, so they are reusable. If you find you get body fluid on them or something, you can sterilize and reuse. But like the other thing is they have these two gaps and then that thing will get there. So you can fit them together. So if you want to make a longer splint, so you can extend. Or you can put them together like so. So when it's long and short, you can use it for ankles. When it's short and long, you can use it for elbows. <coughs> if you look at the length of his arm, you just ask me as The length of his arm, is one splint going to be sufficient? No. Okay, because it's not going to do anything there. So we can put two together, like so. Then we can also split like this. Yeah. You agree? Yeah. Okay. Now, <clears throat> hold that for me. Okay, there's nothing wrong with your patient's other hand. You can use it. No? So I only need two splits. And what else do I need? A band-aid. Bandish. It's a band-aid. Band-aid? It's not a bandish. No, it's not a bandish. It's a bandish. 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 There's no muscle pronunciation. All right, so <clears throat> these are bandages. Normal bandages, right? You've all seen these? Do you know how to use it? Yes. You sure? Are you going to come and show me? Yeah, I know. Sorry. <laughs> All right. What can you use from your first aid box if you don't have this? Thank you. Yeah. This is what that lady in the bush now used. This was just a pop duke. This is not a duke. What is this? It's a triangular bandage. Do you know how to use this thing? Have you ever seen one? Do you know how to use a duke? It's the same thing. All right. So if I don't have a bandage, I can use this. So you can just fold it up a few times like so. <clears throat> like sure, then you can use it as a bandage. All right, but we have enough of everything. When it comes to bandaging and splinting, I have my own way of doing it. Karina has her way. You each will find your own way. All right? <laughs> This, when I cross bandage, your bandage is crossing over itself. So it's holding itself in place. It can't come loose. It can't move. All right? Splint it, support. The patient will always, most of the time, you will find them holding their arm against their body because it's the least painful position. I see. Anyway, when you look at your triangular bandage, you see it's an arrow. Yes. Lost your foot, Mania. When you when you look at it like this, the arrow is pointing this way. Okay. So easy way to remember how to use it. When you stand in front of your patient, <clears throat> you want the arrow to point to the injured side. So just like this, okay? Now, when you hold the long end and the short end, it's easy. The moment you drop this, then you become confused. So now we're going to start doing this. Now we want to take it down there, try to bandage the arm, oh, but we are still here. Okay, so, <clears throat> just like this. So it's under the patient's arm. You can place the arm there. Come to it. Make it. Right, so this one obviously cannot go to the same side. So this one, at the back, make a double knot so it doesn't get loose. You know what I mean with double knot, right? Yeah. Like the one to my guess. Okay. Alright, then this part here. Right, in your first aid box, you should have safety pins. Safety pins are there to put through here, so there's also in place. Okay, and it makes it look nice. Alright, so if you like the patient, you insert the safety pin from the inside out. Okay. What do you do if you don't like the patient? Outside. Wrong outside. outside. Right. If you don't Maybe have one, yeah. just twist it a few times. Drop it in. Make it easy. Why don't you tell me anything? I'm not a business person. Good morning. 
another day Get to school and see the final day of first eight. Final day of first eight. The entire world is up. That's how late we are. Good job. Give me a lot. Yes. I'm being young. So if you look good to At least today, I'm 5 minutes earlier than yesterday Though I'm late, there is still some progress But I'm, I'm never late anyway It's just... Just... Not... Um... Jumala Right? Yeah, I... I promise I am never late for class. It's just that manje, it's not a new formal class. So it gets a real advantage, I think. But yeah, let's see what the day has in store for us. These guys, preferably, most ambulances we use what we call a scoop stretcher. Now, a scoop stretcher has got little knobs on the side and horizontal that you can unscrew and separate the two holes. With a spine board, we have to log roll a patient into a 90 degree angle and then log roll him back. A scoop stretcher though, you can adjust the knobs to lengthen or widen according to the size of the patient and you only have to do a 35 degree roll, put it underneath the patient, other side, 35 degree roll, put it under the patient and just lock it in place. It's advisable to use that if you've got access to it. But spine board, you guys need to know about. Okay, we've got a headboard on the patient's head, it's gonna be on that side. Then we've got the head blocks that you can put up to show them this. To immobilize the patient further, we're going to do whole practical in a minute. We are going to immobilize them with what we call a spider harness. Now guys, ideally, you use the black spider harness. The black spider harness, you'll find that the horizontal straps can be set up or down to accommodate not only the size of the patient, but also the injuries. All right, so basically what needs to happen with a spinal injured patient, we need to turn the patient as one piece. With recovery position. 